Hi again everybody, it's been a long time since I made a video. Last time was about five months ago and since then I picked up a lot of Beatles uh, rarities, uh, obscure albums and uh, 45s. So I want to show you what I got, get up to date a little bit. We'll start with this. This is an album I used to have years ago before I sold off my collection. This is uh, Beatles Twickenham Jams, which is uh, the titles right up there. You can see Twickenham Jams. It is an interesting album, first time I ever had it. Beatles Not For Sale. Nice cover. This is a copy of the Beatles Rarities album that came out in the US. This is version one of this album. I don't know if a lot of people realize that there was a, two versions because there was a mistake on the first one, a couple of mistakes actually. First thing you had was on the back over here it did not say produced by George Martin on it. It was a credit omission. So uh, they, had, they had to go ahead and make the second round. And the second time they had a big letters produced by George Martin. Also over here when they talk about the song Helter Skelter. On this first copy they make a mistake. They say on here, on this version you don't get to hear the classic Lennon statement. I've got blisters on my fingers. Well, Lennon never made that statement. That's a Ringo statement. So if you look at which copy you have, later on they took out the word Lennon and it just says classic statement. I don't know why they didn't change it to classic Ringo statement, but uh, they didn't. Here's one of the early albums I had years ago. Um, it's a 10 inch called, uh, just I guess, a guitar's all right, John, but you'll never earn your living by it, which is something that John's Aunt Mimi used to say to him. And uh, you know, it's not really, nothing on here now that's really that rare, but back then it was pretty obscure. The original copy that I had was on orange vinyl. This is just a standard black record. Um, I think they made it also on blue vinyl, but I'm not positive. Uh, I needed a copy of the Yesterday and Today album in decent shape. Uh, this is pretty good. Uh, the album itself is really in mint condition. The, the cover has some splitting over here on the top, and I'm always on the lookout to get a better copy. So I'll be doing that, you know, as the months go on, always hunting. At least it keeps it active. I mean, if you're a, a big record collector, after a while, you know, you run out of things that you want to get. Here's a, a copy of the Magical Mystery Tour album. Um, I had a copy before, but it was the 1976 reissue. Uh, this is the original 1967 with the, a white border around it. Here's a very interesting find, and I can't believe this. And uh, about 1976 or 1977, I had this album. And uh, when I sold off all my Beatle collection years ago, around 2005, this went with it. It's an album called Yellow Matter Custard, which is uh, basically um, a BBC Sessions, even though it has a 1967 picture on it. But what's interesting about this copy, amazingly, is I found this in a record store, and it's got my original sticker here with my typewriting on it and I used to color code back then when I was a kid the albums and this is green my green sticker of color coding in other words this is the very same album that I owned years ago that I located in a record shop over here pretty amazing here's a really cool album the Beatles dig it what this is is uh it has an eight minute version of the song dig it from the movie let it be that's on the let it be album and it's much nicer than the short version so it's a nice jam with all the Beatles involved. And it's got some other interesting things on here too. Here's an album called Nothing Is Real. This is basically uh, Strawberry Fields Forever uh, outtakes and shows you the progress of the song starting from scratch and how it got to be where it is now as we know it. Uh, this is an album, uh, <laughs> a little odd, Very Best of the Beatles Rarest, number six. This is, you know, an old unofficial album that uh, just has paper here, a paper design with like mimeographed on it. Nothing really great on there by today's standards anymore, but just for collectible purposes. This is uh, George Harrison, All Things Must Pass. I didn't have a copy in nice condition of this album. Now I do. I finally located an original. Uh, up until now I had the Record Store Day reissue and I'm not really wild about reissues. I like to have the original whenever I can get it. Here's an oddity. This is a, a green vinyl album from the movie Backbeat. I don't know if you remember that movie. It was a, 
a movie made, in, I think around 1994, about uh, the Beatles' early years and uh, about Stuart Sutcliffe. Well, this is uh, the soundtrack. You know, Beatles sounded like group in green vinyl. You remember uh, they had in uh, the early 80s, I think it was, uh, uh, Stars on 45, Beatles medley single? Well, this is uh, still, was it sealed? Still sealed album copy of it. And uh, there's some songs on here that were not on the Stars on 45 version that they cover. Stuff like, uh, I don't know, And Your Bird Can Sing, Wait. Um, I don't think they covered that, those. I don't know what else, but... Uh, a lot more stuff there. This is a Twist and Shout album from Canada. The thing about this album is the cover looks a little worn, uh, as if it's an original cover. The record itself is a purple label, capital reissue. Uh, maybe the whole thing is a reissue, I'm not sure, but I, I thought the cover looked original. I needed a copy of the U.S. Revolver album in nice shape, and this is, a, this is in pretty nice shape. I don't think I have to go any further, unless I can ever get a copy that's got the cellophane still on it. But uh, it's good to get that. And here's an album brings back memories. Um, I used to have this. It was one of the first bootlegs I ever owned. Uh, and I got it in 1976 or 77, and I found it again uh, the other day. This is back in 1964 at the Hollywood Bowl, live concert. You know, when they re-released it, or put it out officially, I should say, in 1977 on Capitol Records. They had snippets of the 64 show and the 65 show. This album was just the 64. Here's the American tour with Ed Rudy. Um, always trying to fill in holes, as, I, as I've said, with like better copies. This is a really nice copy of the early Beatles, which I needed, and it's in great shape. Mono copy. You know, I like, I like the mono over the stereo in these early albums. Here's also an upgrade, this upgrade of Paul McCartney's Pipes of Peace album. I actually bought it because I'm always on the lookout to get albums with their original advertising stickers and the cellophane. And he's even got a Crazy Eddie Price sticker, $6.99. The label here says, 11 new McCartney classics. Well, that's up for debate, <laughs> whether they're all classics or not. But uh, I was glad to get this with the cellophane upgrade. And also... Look, look for a long time, last but not least, for the John Lennon collection in good shape. I couldn't find this in really nice shape. This one's in good shape. came out in 1982, and it's got the uh, song listing sticker on it. Well, that's it for this update. I hope it's not going to be so long until I make the next one. Thanks a lot for listening.